Hey everybody and welcome back to Investing with Wesley. About a week ago, a press release from the White House was announced that they're developing a new plan to implement student loan forgiveness. Now it's still very early on, we don't know anything for sure, but the latest rumors is that it's going to be about $10,000 per borrower and only for select colleges. But like with absolutely everything involved with politics, it has raised extreme debate. So in today's episode, I wanna to talk to you about that, what student loan forgiveness would do for you, the individual, and what it would do for the economy as a whole. With that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so like I already said, it is still very early on, and right now all we know is that it's $10,000 per borrower, with other income eligibility limits, as well as select colleges. Now, with the average student loan debt after graduation being close to about $40,000, this definitely isn't going to wipe away all of your student loan debt. But at least it's not supposed to wipe away your total debt balance, at least not yet. I'm sure that's the direction that the government is going to try and head to in the future if this passes, but right now that is not the goal. However, just with this one little topic or one plan being implemented, it's raised huge concerns and huge debates regarding inflation. We already have record-breaking inflation hovering at about 8.7% right now. And what would this extra $5.8 billion do to inflation just to cover $10,000 per borrower off these student loans? Well here, let me give you some of the facts and we're going to do a little bit of math today. And I also just wanna preface that this is extremely simplified math just to help you grasp an idea as opposed to give you 110% accurate number. As we already said, this entire plan is estimated to cost about $5.8 billion. Now to any individual, this is an extremely large amount of money. But to the United States government who spends about $6.8 trillion per year, this number is actually pretty negligible. In fact, $5.8 billion is equal to point 0.85% of the United States total annual spending. So really when it comes to spending the money and getting us into much more of a deficit, those numbers are extremely negligible. So now let's talk about inflation and what we could expect the inflation to do in response to this $5.8 billion bill that we're about to implement. Well, from just 2020 to the present, we've seen record-breaking printing of money. Over 40% of all the US dollars ever printed were printed in the last couple of years. From 2020 to the present, we've printed $16.5 trillion that is currently in circulation. Now, 5.8 billion is 0.035% of the $16.5 trillion that we've recently printed. Now, that number and those percentages mean absolutely nothing, and they're only there to draw a comparison for this next bit of information. Now, if $16.5 trillion caused an inflation gain of 8.7%, then the printing of an additional $5.8 billion, assuming everything else is equal, would cause an inflation gain of 0.003%. So even though $5.8 billion is a lot of money, and even though it is an extremely large free handout, so to speak, when it comes to the argument of inflation, these numbers are pretty much negligible. We have a lot bigger worries to worry about and a lot more to do in fighting this inflation. And just to help you wrap your head around how negligible this amount of inflation increase is compared to what we've been experiencing. Just as a random metric, let's say you had $100. To see the effect of inflation removing value from that $100 bill, the US government could implement this plan over four times, spending over $23 billion before you would lose one penny worth of value from that $100. They could implement this plan four times over before your $100 became $99.99. Now, those are the raw numbers and that is the data and the math to basically tell you that inflation is not the argument we should be having right now. Neither is the free handout. Now, I also wanna say that I in no way actually support this because in my opinion, it robs people of the true value. The true value in taking out debt is knowing there's going to come a point in time where you have to pay that debt back. And there's, in a sense, no free ride. You have to earn that money whether you're selling your time at a job or selling an actual product in a business that you start. Either way, you have to earn every dollar that comes in to repay 
all the debt and all the credit that you've created over the year. This forces people to cut back, to create budgets, to monitor their spending, and to remain disciplined. And the more free rides we get, whether it's student loan forgiveness, welfare, or any other government assistance, it's my personal belief that people will lose respect for the money and never implement those plans or ideas or create that discipline in order to really maximize their understanding of how personal finance works. Now, the inflation numbers aside and my own opinion aside, what a real tangible thing the government could do to actually help the student loan crisis is something that no politician is going to want to do because on the short term, it's going to cause a lot of pain and it's actually going to cause a lot of pain to people in high paying jobs and people of power. But long term, there is definitely way more good than there ever could be bad by doing this one thing. And that one thing is removing the student loan subsidization. And if you don't know what that is, basically the government is saying that they're going to guarantee that note in the event that you can't pay it. Meaning no matter what to the lender, they're going to get paid. So it's basically risk-free lending to the lender. Now this creates massive issues and we've seen it being played out over the past couple decades. And removing the subsidization would actually remove 90% of the problem in my opinion. The government began guaranteeing these loans all the way back in 1965 where very few people were going to college. The government wanted more and more people to go to college, wanted them to have higher paying jobs, higher education to stimulate the economy, all good things. And one of the big reasons no one was going to college back then is because they couldn't really afford it and they also couldn't get a loan to go. Think about it. Someone fresh out of high school has no credit, no job, no skills or education to possibly get a well-paying job to pay these loan backs. And basically they're completely credit worthyless and represent the most amount of risk a bank could possibly take to give someone this loan, especially when the bank knows it could be a couple years before they actually get a good paying job to pay that loan back. So there's deferment and extremely high risk to the lender in giving you this loan straight out of high school. But when the government steps in and says they're going to guarantee the note, all that risk gets wiped away because no matter what, whoever the lender is, is guaranteed to get paid, whether it's from you or the government. Now what this creates is risk-free lending and basically limitless profits for the college education institution that you're going to. Adjusting for today's dollars worth of inflation, in 1969, the average annual tuition was about $2,400 a year. Whereas today for public college, it is about $9,500 a year. So you can see that the price of tuition has gone up exponentially over the years. And actually, if you factor in a percentage rate, it's grown at about 14% year over year since 1969. By comparison, the overall stock market only grows at an average of 10% every year. Meaning if you could somehow invest in student loan lending, then you could beat the market year over year consistently. And like I already mentioned, the US government wanting everyone to go to college, get a better education, and contribute that much more to the economy and to the machine, so to speak, those are all good things. But the problem is the value is in the rarity of the asset. So if in the 1960s, the majority of people didn't have any degrees, those that did got a lot of bang for their buck. The return on their investment of going to college was extremely good. Whereas now pretty much everyone goes to college and gets a degree because that is what's been drilled into your head for decades now. Go to school, go to college, get a job. Go to school, go to college, get a job. It has been repeated for generations now, ever since the 60s. And like I said, the greatest return comes from those with the rarest asset. And when everyone's super, <laughs> no one will be. <laughs> In other words, if everyone has a bachelor's degree, then your bachelor's degree is basically worthless because everyone has one. That's why more and more people are now going to get their masters and then more and more people who have masters are going to go get their doctorate. At the end of the day, yes, you may be receiving a great education, but has the education actually gotten better since the 1960s or has it just been updated? The real solution and a real answer to stop the student loan debt crisis that's happening is to initially stop subsidizing these loans. Could a plan and budget be put in place to forgive all existing debts and then stopping the subsidization so all future debts 
were under this new policy, I'm sure something like that could be made up and the numbers would have to be calculated for the inflation calculation all over again. But that's not really the point. The real solution is to stop subsidizing so that there is much less demand of everyone going to college. And when demand falls, prices fall as well. And I know what you're thinking. With all these people no longer going to college, they stand even less of a chance in success in the real world because of all the people that already did go to college and get their degree. And this is why I said in the short term, it would cause a lot of pain, but in the long, long term, in the decades and generational term, it'll have the best effects. It would also force the parents and the teachers in grade school and high school to teach about building credit and finances and investing and everything else. It would force better implementation and better learning of personal finance so that you could build your credit over the years of high school and maybe become somewhat credit worthy to get a student loan and go to college. At the end of the day, people need to stop debating about whether or not this is a good thing or whether or not it should happen. Stop debating about the inflation because the numbers are basically negligible and really they just need to address the elephant in the room. And that big elephant in the room is really just jealousy. People that have already paid down their student loans are jealous at the people that don't need to pay theirs down because things are going to be forgiven. And really, when you think about it, there is no reason you should be jealous over this because the government could change policies tomorrow about something else that does benefit you and someone else will be jealous. Sometimes you're going to be on the winning end. Sometimes you might be on the losing end. It really doesn't matter. You have no control and there's no reason for you to be jealous. If anything, you should look at it like a positive. If you did have student loans and already paid them off or are working to pay them off, you're learning a valuable skill. You're learning how to budget. You're learning how to remain disciplined with your money. And if you keep honing those skills and keep honing those disciplines, even after you've paid off all of your debt, you can continue to hone those skills and continue to remain disciplined and invest so much money into the market that you could be well on your steps to financial freedom. And it all started with you developing the skills and the respect for the debt that you had. So if anything, you could kind of look at them with pity to the people that will never have the chance to develop those skills because they're just going to get a handout from the government. And the more handouts you get, the less respect you have for the money. Either way though, these are just my opinions. I hope you got value in this video. If you ever had a question, comment, or wanted something addressed, I have a dedicated Facebook and Instagram account that you can feel free to message me there. Either way though, the choice is yours and I'll see you in the next episode.